your assignment for today is to think of yourself as a supplier of fried chicken. In other words, you own a fast food outlet like this one. Try to determine what factors might influence the quantity of fried chicken that you decide to supply. Now, for this exercise, don't worry too much about the demand curve. Let's just imagine that there is real market demand for fried chicken. Let's see how that went. I've decided to call my business the Funky Chicken. One of the factors when deciding how much to supply will be the price. So in other words, how much you can get for a piece of chicken? And would a higher price cause you to supply a higher or a lower quantity? The higher the price, the more profits I'll make and that will push me to sell more. That's right. So if we denote quantity supplied as QS, we can say that as price P increases, so QS increases and vice versa. Looking back, how does this price supply relationship differ from the price demand for fried chicken pieces? Well, in the demand formula, a higher price leads to a drop in quantity demanded. It's a negative or inverse relationship. But with supply, a rise in price leads to a higher quantity supplied, which is a positive relationship. Now, I can hear some of you thinking, surely you can only supply as much of a product as the public is willing to buy. Well, that's correct. And we'll look more closely at the relationship between supply and demand later. But for now, in order to understand how a supplier makes decisions, we'll focus just on the supply side of the market. So, we can now define supply. It is the quantities of a good or service that suppliers plan to sell at each possible price during a certain period. We have established that there's a positive relationship between price and the quantity supplied. So if the price rises, the quantity supplied will also increase. If we use the symbol PX for the price of the product, as we did with the demand equation, we can start our supply formula in the same way. Supply is firstly a function of the price of the product, PX. What other factors, apart from the price, do you think might influence the amount of fried chicken that the funky chicken restaurant decides to supply? These would be factors such as the cost of production, things like the rental cost of the building, wages, interest on loans the business has, water, electricity, oil for frying, and of course, the price of chickens, straight from the farmer. In other words, the price of the factors of production, such as labour and capital, are important, as well as the other input costs, like oil, water and electricity. We denote the cost of production with the symbol PC. So, let's continue our supply equation. What will funky chicken do if its cost of production increases while the price of fried chicken stays the same? You'll find that the funky chicken will start to supply or produce less fried chicken because it is now less profitable to do so. In other words, a negative relationship exists between the cost of production and supply or the higher the cost of production, the lower the supply, and vice versa. Now, can you think of another factor apart from price and cost of production? Another important factor is technology. New technology, perhaps a fryer that uses less electricity or new, cheaper packaging material, might make it possible to produce fried chicken at a lower cost. So we'll be able to supply more at the same selling price. We denote the price of alternative products as PG, and we can add this variable to our supply equation. Let's try and figure it out. Let's assume that you not only supply fried chicken, but also chicken burgers. You must now decide how many fried chicken pieces to supply and how many chicken burgers. Pieces of fried chicken and chicken burgers are substitutes in production. Supplying less fried chicken means you'll be able to supply more chicken burgers and vice versa. Now, as a business person, your primary interest is maximizing your profits. And you'll try to produce a combination of fried chicken and chicken burgers that will help you do just that, maximize your profits. 
Now, given this information, what's most likely to happen if, for some reason, the price you can charge for a chicken burger rises while the price of a fried chicken piece stays the same? A negative relationship exists between the quantity supplied of one good and the price of an alternative. The higher the price of alternative products, the lower the supply of our primary good. There are also other factors, such as the number of suppliers, N, expected price, the weather, and so on. But before we consider these other factors, we'll first have a look at the law of supply.